Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we begin this holy sacrifice, let us take a few moments now acknowledging our sins, and in so doing, prepare ourselves to enter more fully into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Israel is a luxuriant vine whose fruit matches its growth. The more abundant his fruit, the more altars he built. The more productive his land, the more sacred pillars he set up. Their heart is false. Now they pay for their guilt. God shall break down their altars and destroy their sacred pillars. If they would say, we have no king, since they do not fear the Lord, what can the king do for them? The king of Samaria shall disappear like foam upon the waters. The high places of Avon shall be destroyed, the sin of Israel. Thorns and thistles uh, shall overgrow their altars. Then they shall cry out to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall upon us. Sow for yourselves justice. Reap the fruit of piety. Break up for yourselves a new field, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain down justice upon you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. <clears throat> Seek always the face of the Lord. Seek, Seek always the, the face of the Lord. Lord. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Seek, Seek always the face of the Lord. Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. Seek always the face of the Lord. You, descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Seek always the face of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. 
The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. In looking at the Gospel of Matthew, where we find a reading today, sometimes it's helpful to, uh, to know that Matthew has a very strong structure to his Gospel. He really has five discourses. And basically, where we find ourselves today in the Gospel is the first one has just ended. And that first one is the Sermon on the Mount. We, and you know it well. It's about, you know, what must we do to enter the doors of the kingdom? The second one is the Discourse on Mission. And that's what we begin today. Really, this reading comes right at the beginning of chapter 10, and that's where the discourse on mission comes. It's a how-to chapter. Really, it tells them how to go out, proclaim, to speak the good news, and announce that to all the world. The third discourse is that on parables, where Jesus Christ takes the mystery of the kingdom, if we want, and presents it in everyday life, and does it through parables. Okay, now we find ourselves the fourth discourse, and that's on community. It's a new way of living as a community of believers, of followers of Jesus Christ, living by the commandments, living by the Beatitudes, everything that Christ has laid out in Scripture. And the final discourse is about the future. It's eschatological, really. And it's a future of the coming of the final kingdom and where we will also, should we've lived through the kingdom here on earth, we will then move on to that kingdom. But just to give you an idea where we are in the Gospel of Matthew, and there's a lot more to come, but really a lot has been said already in that Sermon on the Mount. And today starts that discourse on the mission. So there's an accent, if you want, or three aspects of that we need to look at. First, it's the call of the disciples, the apostles. We hear that clearly today. The list of the 12 apostles, they're named. And you know the names, we've heard them all, but sometimes we have to stop and think, why would they put all that right in the gospel? Naming is important within the church. It's done when you were baptized. Your name was given to you. In a sense, you were registered in the community. You know, later we're gonna to get to that discourse on the community, but that's how you are known within the faith community the name you carry. And the last uh, aspect is really the sending out of the 12 apostles. But let's look at this very beginning, the gospel we have today. Yesterday, if we recall, we gotta think way back, it ended saying that there was a need for laborers. You know, the harvest was great, but the laborers were limited. Jesus Christ today sets about to add to those number of laborers. And he starts with these 12 apostles that we hear of basically calls them and sends them. The call of the 12, he appoints these 12, recalls in a very particular way the 12 tribes of Israel. And um, Jesus sending them out, but later we will see it goes broader than Israel. But the focus right here, and we're gonna see Christ tells them not to go past uh, the tribes of Israel, that they're to stay within that structure to where the covenant was made between God and his people Covenant was broken by his people. The golden calf, the sinful nature of the human being. And now Christ has come to set up a new covenant. But they start out with a focus on those 12 tribes, the 12 apostles. And it's really the kingdom of Christ, of Jesus, here on earth, that is the new Israel. In the Gospel of Matthew, it's highlighted that Jesus gives the authority that he has to his apostles. Very important aspect. And it, it said clearly at the beginning where he gives them and gave them authority 
And he gave him, he gave him authority over the unclean spirits to drive them out and every disease and every illness. Those two aspects, that's what people had seen Jesus doing. You know, if we think later about the miracles that take place, those are the aspects that Jesus is doing. Driving out the evil one and curing people. Um, huge signs to people around them because they've known this person in the village their whole life who couldn't walk and suddenly he can. But then Jesus says to him, you know, which one is easier for me to say, you know, pick up your mat and walk or your sins are forgiven. And we have Christ introducing for you and for me the true power that he has and here we hear that he shares that power with his apostles, his disciples. So Jesus gives those 12 a sharing in his authority. He commissions them really to go out. And at the end, what is he talking? He's also talking about a preaching dimension. We have to understand that. That Christ sees his healing, his, whether it's from the demon of the day who's out there, or it's from the illness, Christ is preaching along with that. So he's giving that same authority to the apostles. And it, later we see that's passed on to others who will follow. Apostle means really those who are sent. And we see clearly the sending forth uh, by Jesus of his apostles. And they participate, as I noted, in the authority of the one who sends them. And this is key to understand that Christ gave that authority to the apostles and sent them forth. And that is a continuous line that comes down, if you want to say, through history. But really, that's a lay term. It comes down through salvation history, yes, but comes down through the presence of the kingdom here on earth. That's the authority that Christ has given. And it's being passed down, if you want to say, from generation to generation. We then hear about the naming. And you know the apostles. It's you know, interesting, the, the two sets of brothers who are there, we hear about them. Judas comes last, it says he's going to betray Jesus. Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. In the whole midst, really, there's one, uh, Philip, there's a Greek name. The others really are all Jewish names, almost coming straight out of the Old Testament, except for Philip, a Greek name, kind of, if you want to say, despite the fact that Jesus is going to tell them, stay with these 12 tribes, stay with the the covenant that was made with the Jewish people, it's kind of almost an indication that there's going to move toward the Gentiles with that Greek name that comes in. But really it demonstrates continually that, that appointing, the naming of them, the concern of Christ for the, the sheep who are in need of their shepherd. And he takes these 12 and they're going to go off to foreign lands and be those shepherds. They're going to look upon the sheep give them the direction they need. The first Christians really, as we hear that here, they were not open to the pagans. It says after, um, do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, a few things here. Uh, we know that Jesus sits with the Samaritan woman at the well. Obviously, Christ is seeing that the message, not only is it not being received, you've got the scribes, you've got the Pharisees, you've got the politicals of the day, we'll just leave it that way, refuting his message, getting a lot of pushback. And Jesus sees that and understands that, and he himself branches out, that Samaritan woman at the well, he himself begins to look broader than the lost tribes of Israel and to begin to send his message. We know that later St. Peter and St. Paul have kind of a discussion and it, and it gets rather deep uh, about what is the idea of taking the message out to other than the Jewish world. And in the end, even Christ, when he appears to them a number of times after his resurrection and he talks about them having to go out, it becomes broader than the Jewish world. You know, it's those who will hear the message. You know, if there's a peaceful man in that house, your peace will rest with them. If not, move on. That was, the Lord was addressing there some of the difficulty in, well, even people who were initially his disciples, kind of abandoning him at some point. And we all have to be conscious of that. You good people tune into this live stream. 
with your faith, and it means his faith is dear to you, you wouldn't take the opportunity to do this. And we live in a difficult time with this pandemic, but we all have to be careful. We hear in scripture more than once, disciples of Christ, it was difficult and they turned away. Jesus knew that. And he sent out this 12 now on mission to go out into the whole world as it's known at that time and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Preach this gospel message. We've had the opportunity to hear it. And our response has to be certainly one of living the gospel message. May we all be blessed in that task. May we receive the grace that we need to go forth and live the good news of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now place our needs, prayers, and petitions before God. For all the clergy, that they all may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their lives, and that they may be the shepherds of those assigned to their care. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. In this time of the pandemic, we pray for all government leaders around the world. May God grant them fortitude and patience as each of them must lead their people through this time of difficulty. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering the effects, particularly of the COVID virus, but of any illness, that just as the Lord sent his 12 out, to continue to heal those from diseases and illnesses, so too the Lord may put his healing hand upon those who suffer from the pandemic. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lost sheep of our community, in some sense that gospel message touches on that fact, a recognition of the, the lost tribes of Israel, the lost sheep, that those in our world today who have chosen possibly another path that doesn't include the Lord in the same way that they will reconsider their position and that the Holy Spirit will enlighten and implant in them uh, a stronger and new seed of faith. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have recently died, that those who have died in the light of Christ may be rewarded with the glory of eternal life. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we humbly ask that you grant us these petitions and those which remain silent in our hearts, and that you do this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in Christ's divinity as he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and that desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.